In this video, we're going to talk about face coloring, which is really um, the flip side of a coin that we've already discussed. So first, um, we've talked about vertex coloring, we've talked about edge coloring, face coloring is no different, except that you're going to need an embedding now, right? Because we only have faces and embeddings, meaning there are no crossing edges, because if edges cross, then really what represents a face? So a proper face coloring is an embedding of a graph, of an embedding of a graph, um, that you get by assigning a color to every face, such that if two faces are touching, so if they share a boundary edge, they get different colors. So let's just go straight to an example and see how this works. Okay, so um, let's take this graph in green. So maybe we label this edge um, color number one or this face color number one and that means that this face can't have color number one and this face can't have color number one and this face can't have color number one and the infinite face also gets a color and it can't have color number one right so any two faces if they share a boundary edge so like this edge is shared by this face and this little triangular face that means that these two can't get the same color so for example maybe we do this color number two um, now these two edges, so if I go to this sort of big triangle over here, um, it doesn't touch this one, so may I can also color this one number two, right? But now this sort of um, semicircle face on the top right, it can't have color number one, it can't have color number two, so we give it color number three. Okay, so we just keep doing this. Um, so for example, maybe this gets color number one, and this gets color number three. And then now if we go to the infinite face, it can't have color number one, it can't have color number two, it can't have color number three, it needs a new color, four. Okay, so this idea is we're gonna color it just like all our other coloring rules where things that are sort of next to each other don't get the same color. Um, where in this case, next to each other means sharing a common boundary edge. Okay, so this is a face coloring. Now, but this is actually very similar to two concepts that we've actually already talked about. Um, one is a different type of coloring, um, and the other is dual graphs. So you might think for a second about what does face coloring this graph do in the dual graph? And that's what we're about to explore. So here I've copied down um, our green graph down here. Again, I've copied it in blue. Um, so let's go ahead and construct the dual graph here, right? So remember, to do the dual, I put it, every face is going to be a new vertex, or it's going to be a vertex in the dual. So here's our infinite one. So that's going to give me this. All these edges correspond to exactly one new edge. In the dual graph. And then the infinite face, right, is adjacent to all of these things. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. Um, so let me see. That's going to represent this triangle. And then... This is going to represent this four cycle sitting below this triangle and then we have these parallel edges here on the inside of this four cycle and then we need a new vertex that's going to go to all of these except these two okay so maybe it goes we put it here and it goes to the top of the triangle, right? That's this edge. The left side of the triangle, that's this edge. The bottom corner of the four cycle, that is this edge. And then it also goes to the bottom right corner of the four cycle. So this is the dual graph. And if you go back and think about the face coloring of this graph, that corresponds to a vertex coloring of the dual graph, right? So <clears throat> um, the infinite face got colored number four, so that means the vertex representing the infinite face, which was this one, is going to be colored number four. 
Okay, this face was colored number one. That means the corresponding vertex in the dual gets colored number one. This face was colored three. This face was colored two. That means this vertex is are going to be two, three, and two respectively. Um, oh, I forgot an edge in my dual graph. Here. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully I've got them all now. <clears throat> okay, so then this was colored number two, this is colored number one, this is colored number three, and this is colored number two. So this, all the faces, the colors that went on these faces, if I apply those same colors to the corresponding dual vertices, I get a vertex coloring, right? Four is adjacent to three, to two, to one, and to three. Th one is adjacent to one and two and three, two is adjacent to three and one and one and two. So you can see that this is a proper vertex coloring. So face coloring and embedding of G corresponds to vertex coloring the dual graph, right? Because faces in the regular graph sort of switch places with vertices in the dual graph. And this is going to be important later um, when we think about um, flows. So <clears throat> keeping this in mind, a face coloring and embedding of a graph corresponds to vertex coloring the dual. Okay, so how many colors is it going to take? If you have a planar graph, right? Because we want an embedding. So for now, we're just going to, I mean, you could theoretically do this um, for graphs embedded on any surface, but we're just going to stick to ones embedded on the plane. But if you have a planar graph um, and it can be properly face colored, right? How many colors do you need? So you may want to think about that for a second, keeping in mind this fact. Okay, so here's the justification. If you have a planar graph, the dual of that planar graph is also planar. Okay, so this can also be embedded on the plane. And how many colors does it take to, to do vertex coloring of a planar graph? Four, that's the four color theorem that we learned about earlier, which means that if you want to color the faces of a graph, you also only need at most four by the same four color theorem, right? Because if you want to face color this graph, you can think about vertex coloring the dual graph, but the dual is planar, so it's only going to take four colors. Okay, so this is an introduction to face coloring, uh, and in the next few graphs, or in the next few videos, rather, we're going to be thinking about flows on graphs, and we're going to see that flows and face coloring are sort of related to each other.